he gives her the one of the most savage lines. Which is, it's so good. It's so good. Tells her, put your clothes back on. Yeah. You told me I could ravage you in any ways. I choose to ravage your pride. I choose to ravage your pride. My desire is to see you humbled. So good. I was losing it. Thumbs down. It's a very funny oh, line. Oh, God. Welcome back to the 175th episode of the Better Bad Bad Show. Watch terrible movies. So you should see I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilgo, joined as always by your host, Mr. Kyle Hinton, who watched the wrong movie. Aww. Or I did, depending on who you who you ask. <laughs> so so here was the thing. Hey, we had no a... attention to the man behind the curtain. <laughs> I gotta explain this because it's gotta take a little bit of setting up here. Okay. The movie we're about to talk about is uh, not the movie that was going to be this episode initially what we were planning. There was a miscommunication. Originally, the, the thought process was to do the original Dungeons & Dragons movie from 2000 because, uh, one, the new, the new Dungeons & Dragons movie out. Did you see that? I don't want to see you die, which is why I'm going to leave the room. Yes. Well, no, no, I haven't seen it. I was what gonna, do you mean yes? No, I, saw, I, I know of it. I have okay. not seen it. I know of I, it. Okay. I, I, I opted for Super Mario Brothers instead. Okay. Uh, it's quite good. I enjoyed okay. it a lot. Uh, I thought it was very fun. I have no idea how accurate it is or whatever, but it, I enjoyed it as a movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. I mean, they have a tiefling playing a fucking druid, but okay. Like I said, I don't give a shit. I don't care. I just thought it was a fun movie. But uh, that being said, we're like, let's do. We've talked about. We 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 have mentioned doing the old Dungeons and Dragon movies a handful of times. You can control dragons with a dragon army at my command. I can crush the Empress. I found one I wanted to do, which is the third movie in the series. Uh, because I saw somebody else mention it somewhere, and I was like, "This looks like my kind of schlock." Yeah, no, it, it, it reeks of like the legend of Red, whatever the uh, Red Reaper, Red or whatever, Reaper. Whatever it just was. reeks yes. that hard. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to do this one. I was like, "Well, here's the plan, Kyle. You do the 2000 one. We'll do that one first. Then we'll do the third one. Who cares about the second one?" Uh, and what happened was we did not do that. No, <laughs> one would say, Brian. We failed our gather information checks. Yeah, one of us did. And so we <laughs> <laughs> It was confusing. Uh, anyways. Um, <laughs> anyway, so the point is, we are not doing the 1999 or the 2001 right now. We're skipping straight to the third one. Kyle's going to do it because things are all out of whack. Uh, it's a complicated. It doesn't fuck fuck you. It doesn't. You don't need to know all the information. I failed my sense motive. Okay. Point being, we're jumping straight to the third one. We <laughs> wait. We may one day go back and do the two thousand one. Oh. Who knows? Uh, and Kyle's going to be editing this one. But let's get into it. It's Dungeons and Dragons, the Book of Vile Darkness. <laughs> The, uh, whatever the second one, the dragon. Okay. Uh, which I think we Wrath of the one. Dragon God. Yeah, I think. I think we got sent that one in the mail. That one, it's been a while since I've seen. That one was... <laughs> it, it's like... So, like, the first one's campy and kooky and yes. kind of fun. I suggest we lay low, let the whole thing blow over, come back, rob everybody. Which I watched that one, and by the way, so I'm aware. <laughs> I'm all caught up on the first one. The second one. one and this one are significantly more lore-driven. Dishmere shall be raised to mark the beginning of my reign. Yes, uh, apparently uh, this one though is it's I in my experience. So I did watch the 2001 because again the miscommunication. I watched it. I thought it was like okay, like it's not a good movie, no. and it's got some terrible <laughs> CG. Holy shit! I mean, I, you know, it was 2000, but it's also cheaply made. Yes, in cheaply 2000. made terrible CG, but. Overall, I was like, this is kind of fun. Like, it's again, is not good, uh, but it was like kind of fun. Uh, and I thought actually kind of similarly about this one. Like, it's not that bad. It has like a four on IMDb, but it's like yeah, okay. Yeah, but take the budget and divide it by about an eighth. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's definitely you can tell, but I thought they did an okay job stretching the budget about as far. There's a there is one scene. In this movie, with an entirely CG character, 
that I thought was incredible. Oh, and, the 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 weird forest. The yes, spirit, that yeah, which that we'll get is, to. I think it's creepy. Yes, I thought it was so good. That scene, I was like, this is legitimately just good. Like, and, and super creepy and weird. We'll get to that in a second because it's wild, or mm-hmm. not in a second. It'll be a little bit it's toward the end. But anyways, but so anyways, the book is or the the, the movie is the book of vile darkness. Um, we open up with a, a, a prologue explaining the book of vile darkness and, and, yes. and the backstory of everything going on here, this which I don't guy, know enough I, of the lore. I don't know exactly who it was, but he like sold his soul to Nerul, who is like yeah, they the, say Nerul. No, the, well, yes, yeah, sir. Some guy, I guess, did it to Nerul. I don't know. Consumed with hatred for all things living, Nerul sold his soul to the demon lords of the abyss. I have it written Nerules. as Nagrul, but it's N E R U L L. Oh, maybe I missed so that. So that. that that is the the god though who they worship, who is like the god of like death, death and, and darkness, sure, and yes, betrayal or whatever. And then they make a book out of some dude's body. <laughs> yes, they take his skin to make the pages. They take his bones to, to make, make the, the cover. cover, and then his his blood to make the ink. Yes, <laughs> yeah, or something like that. Nagrul's skin was flayed into pages. His bones. Hammered into a cover. Uh, and so they make this book, and then this book basically allows Nerul, or, uh, I guess is his name, to like cover the world in darkness, mm-hmm. is the idea. Uh, but but then the Knights of the New Sun rise up yes, and fight back the evil horse. Paladins of Palor, Brian. Yes. If you knew anything about DD, I do not. They called themselves the Knights of the New Sun and swore an oath to resurrect hope. So, uh, yeah, uh, they they fight back the hordes or something like that. Uh, they're this like a this, yeah this glorious uh, order of paladins or something along those lines, um, and they eventually take the book and scatter it like into pieces, which is always a mistake. Just, like, just, what, destroy just destroy them. Destroy it. Yeah, <laughs> don't Although it might it might be considered a major artifact, and you don't want to break major artifacts. They tend to explode. Again, seems like a bad idea to just scatter the pieces. Uh, apparently, the ink does get destroyed, but the cover and the pages just get, like, mm. scattered off into the, the ends of the world. The disciples of Nagrul disassembled the book and bribed three greedy souls to hide the pieces. And then we move forward some X amount of years. But this is all explained in a prologue, which is like straight out of a video game. It is a the most video game cutscene yeah. prologue yeah. I've seen in, yeah. since the it's 2000 version, honestly. Uh, it's pretty good. Um, but the idea is that if the, if the evil people find and re- recombine this book of vile darkness, they can once again spread darkness across the world or whatever is the idea. Uh, and then the title card pops up, and it's a very cheap, terrible-looking title card. And it was also in German yeah, on the website. We on it's like every single version of it was in German on that site. Yeah, yeah. I could not find an English. We could not find an English version. Well, it's all in well, English. It's all yeah. in English. It's just the title. The title is, is clearly like a German release or something. But in German, it's Das Buch der Dunklen Schatten, <laughs> which is <laughs> great. I love German. It's so fun. Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the the just the CG on that opening title card, it looks terrible. Um, but then we're introduced to Grayson Asriel. What a name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who is our our young knight uh, he's paladin. Take, yes, he's taking his initiation, uh, his, as, his, his final vows, if you will, yes. as a paladin of Pelor. To be, like, inducted into the order, and he has to, like, touch his, the tip of his sword to a stone... <laughs> And then hopes it's going to do some magic. I I guess it was supposed to like shine brightly or something like that. Yeah, I probably do the thing where later where his beacon, Mm. his little emblem or whatever uh, lights up. It was probably thinking it was going to do that. But nothing happens. And he seems disappointed. And so does everybody else. And I thought like that meant he wasn't like part of the group. But that's not it. No, because it it hasn't worked for anybody. Yes. Effectively, these are all paladins without paladin powers. Yes. So they're just like shitty versions of fighters. Yes. Yes. Basically, that was my understanding as well, because none of them are blessed by the holy light of the sun, dawn, or whatever the fuck. It's not that (laughs) difficult, guys. You just go to a temple, pay for your atonement, and you get your powers back weekly. They were trying, Kyle. (laughs) They didn't pay enough for their atonement, apparently. It's been 800 years since the last (laughs) paladin was created, and apparently they're very cheap or something. I don't know. I thought I'd be the one to waken it, as did all the other knights of the new sun for the past 800 years. Uh, so he didn't get to become a Sun Knight, but this dude, the guy who plays Grayson Azrael, did you? He has the most intense brow. He does. <laughs> <laughs> Show it from the side, and I was like, "Holy shit, that guy's got like it is 
it sticks out so far. I thought yeah. I was about to start selling me Geico insurance in the early 2000s. <laughs> <laughs> before Ooh. getting a terrible TV show that everybody he, knew he was going to fail before it. <laughs> oh, it's at the club. Well, we wouldn't want to miss a barbecue down at the club now, would we? So when are you going sailing with John Tesh? He Started. must have a problem putting on, like, sunglasses or goggles. You would think, man. It is, I mean, he's a handsome dude. He's got a very chiseled job. That, I, the brow was just, like, so striking. It's like, holy shit. That's, a, that's an intense brow. But, so he, again, he, he doesn't get the magic for the ceremony, but it's fine. Nobody else has had that happen for 800 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's his dad is, like, the one inducting. You mean everyone. the guy who's, like, five years older than him? Doesn't seem that much older, but yeah. I, mean, I guess he's just barely enough old enough to be his father but that's mm. his dad uh, and his dad's like ah it's okay don't worry about it and then out of nowhere <laughs> a bunch just of fucking- bunch of people it's like uh, you're you're right dad you know i shouldn't be discouraged by this it happens but as long as we serve paylor everything's gonna turn out all right yeah <laughs> everybody just gets vaporized a bunch of like mages roll in and just start murdering oh, everybody God. it was cool actually seeing like like mages legitimately participate in combat because yeah. so often it's like all right now we need this we need a lot of CG in this scene so we're gonna film the mage over here casting a fireball yeah so, w- w- why isn't he in the thicket with everybody else no but they yeah well uh, to be fair they do you could tell they were at least a little short on budget here because the fight starts and him and his dad run into battle uh, yeah. and then we and just cut got, yep. <laughs> it's like we don't watch anything happen after that we see the first opening stages of the fight and then we're immediately done with it uh, and we wake up and Ezra or Ezra or Grayson wakes up and he is, is the only survivor. The only survivor. Everybody is dead on the ground around him, but his dad is gone. I, he somehow realizes his dad isn't there. He did not look yeah, at like yeah, any of the like, bodies. Are you sure your dad's alive? Uh, okay. <laughs> There's like a hundred bodies on the ground around you, and he's like, Dad, guess nah, you're not here. <laughs> he must have <laughs> <right>. been captured. <laughs> Uh, and then he he literally like he tries to ask the stone for guidance and the stone says fuck off again and then he he Pe- seemingly Pelo, I've never prayed to you before I have no tongue for it <laughs> just full cone it I've never prayed to you before I have no tongue for it yeah but then he uh, but apparently even though the stone doesn't tell him where to go he apparently catches a whiff of him or something because he it's just looks something. over and he's like trail yeah, exactly. they must have went that way it's, it's like what smelly barbarians of course <laughs> yeah what how did you whatever but then he so he runs into town and we see him kind of like tracking them through the countryside and also and initially before he gets into town he like stops and changes and i don't know or takes like his like well like he's, yeah he's whatever. taking off like it's like a leather curse yeah curse something, or something like, like that. that which i think but has like, like the leather it has a the, symbol it's like yeah but you're you also have a belt that also has your symbol paler on it yeah doesn't care <laughs> just leaves it on but his the chain mail like it's is so, so it's bad. so bad it's, it's so it's, clearly well, one, which is fine. You can do that. It's so clearly the knitted kind that's mm-hmm. just like fabric or whatever, which can look okay from a distance. But they show him take his cloak off, and you can see that it's only the front half, and it's sewn to yeah. like like regular linen. Uh, it looks so bad. It's so cheap. It's so cheap. But um, and I think they realize that because he loses that the the, the mail like immediately, mm-hmm. <laughs> and like in the next scene he has like that leather armor, and that's all he wears the rest of the movie, which also looks cheesy and bad, but not nearly as bad as some of the other no. armor. Which We'll no. get to. I'm proficient with both hands at carving. Shall I show you? Uh, and they also don't do any sound effects for the male when he nope. wears it. They're just nope. like, there's no like, ch- like, like chink- chain, tinkling yeah, or exactly. nothing. And it's nothing. like, dude, it's, oh, it's so easy. Mm-hmm. All right, whatever. Um, but well, he, you can't just, yeah, you gotta fully sound, Brian, and you know. It's, I know. I get it. I say it's easy. It's not easy, but it's still. I mean, it's they, like they may know these Rin Fair people for their sets and stuff like that, but they can't just borrow a, a thing of chainmail and, and go, shake it in front of a shake in front of a mic. Yeah. Well, and the, the thing it's like, yeah, I get it. It's just like, well, then don't put them in sh- mail at all, mm-hmm. which they, they, I think they realize very quickly. And like, that's, I what said, they, uh, that's why they were smart in the first one. And they were like, yeah, just fuck it, leather armor. Yeah. And clothes. I, which, again, they do that in this. <laughs> After this scene, he's like, eh, never, not wearing mail anymore. <laughs> Let's just put yeah. him in leather armor. <laughs> Because that way we don't well, go make Apparently, it. the freaking army has is like insane magic armor that is he gets it? that he gets later from the adventurer's fault. 
I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, we'll yet, get to so that we'll point. But anyways, let's let's get to our brothel. He gets to the brothel and we meet the pros- uh, a prostitute who is talking to some barbarians who I guess he recognizes. He somehow knows they were involved in what was going on. Yeah. And he goes in and talks to her and he, and she's like, "All right, let's have sex." And he's like, "No, that's not why I'm here. I need information." And then she takes him to this like magic vendor guy, mm-hmm. and so th- he takes what is this? she takes him to the Adventures Vault. Oh, which, is that what that is? Okay. In addition to the Book of Isle Darkness being an actual D and D book, the Adventures Vault is also D and D. Oh, well, anyway, there's this guy here who gives him the world's ugliest sword. <laughs> he also has a he says he has a going out of business sale. Is that what he says? Yeah, I missed that. Welcome to the Adventurers Vault, going out of business sale today. All prices are final, rock bottom. Uh, and and just to show you how Grayson is completely irredeemable, unredeem, irredeemable. There we go. I think for, both uh, work, but yes. And, and how badly he needs his uh, paladin powers to be redeemed. Here's all the money from the paladin tithings that uh, all my my brothers have put together. I'm gonna buy some armor and shit with it. Yeah. Like I don't know what supposed, that means. It's supposed to go to the church okay. of Taylor, but okay. Oh, so I, I see. <laughs> yeah, like he does later say that I've forsaken all of my oaths. <laughs> At the end of the true. movie, he's like, I've really fucked up. In D and D, a paladin has to like give. I think it's like ten or fifteen percent. I got a tithe, basically. Yeah. I got you. Okay. Um, but yeah, so he 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 buys some new equipment and he gets again I, to, in my opinion like the ugliest sword. It looks fucking, It's one of those ones. Yeah. It's like a Halloween store like <laughs> skull and crossbones. Like mm. so, it just looks ridiculous. Uh, it's like it's like a knockoff of Frostmourne from like uh, Wrath of Lich King or whatever. My, my, one of my favorite parts is like the armor he gets. It comes in either righteous or heroic. And he, the, the immediate look was like, uh, the heroic? Because I, I got to blend in. <laughs> Can't be righteous. Yeah. 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 And that knight armor? Paragon or heroic? Paragon. Uh, so then uh, then he goes to a tavern, and as he's going into this tavern, he says goodbye to the prostitute, and they have this, like, heartfelt, teary goodbye. Do they know no, each other? No. How, why? They literally just met. They just met, and it seems like she's like very like has affection for him. Like, do you don't even know this guy? Well, okay, whatever. Well, apparently this guy immediately like every woman just wants to. It's true. He know. is our main character, Kyle. They all <laughs> love him. Stay strong. <laughs> he is a handsome guy. I get it. Uh, but yeah, so she like she like touches his face and says goodbye, and he goes into this tavern to get more information. Uh, and I love there's somebody playing cards and like the establishing shots, which is very clear. It's a split second. You'll have to grab a still. But there's like they put a card down and then a second card, and especially the second card is so clearly a modern card game card. Was that, like it was, the it was graphics, the gathering card. <laughs> it's it's not Magic the Gathering, but it's something that is so clearly like made in like 2005 or like it's you can t- mm. this is. Not not the art style of a card from whatever yeah. century this yeah. is supposed to be. <laughs> like, it just looks ridiculous. Um, and then they also do the classic uh, 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 set dressing at a tavern that every one of these movies that we do ever does, which is go to Costco, buy a bunch of rotisserie chickens, yeah. and just set them on the tables everywhere. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, but then he meets this group of... Uh, Adventurers, but they're like they're kind of like the bad crew. Mm-hmm. They're like they're not the, nice guys. Yeah, these are for the most part worshippers of of Norel, So they're all yes. like they all revel in evil. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it's the main woman, uh, Accordia is her mm-hmm. name, uh, who's some sort of mage or something, sorcerer. I don't know, sorcerer, sorcerer, I don't know like what to say. Um, and she's like the ro- leads the group. Then there's this guy who looks like Kratos, kind of, <laughs> which I don't remember. So his he's name. A, he's a Goliath actually. Okay. So that's a that's a one of the races in the game. Yeah. But yeah. like they are, they're half yeah, giant. Yeah, he's huge. Yeah, he's gigantic. And I think it would have been great if he had a a uh, oversized weapon because that's one of their abilities is to wield oversized weapons. Oh yeah. Pen- well, he with just, lesser penalty. Yeah, he doesn't really have. He, yeah. <laughs> if they would have played into that, we would have because you just you just do like a giant fiberglass like club or hammer yeah. or something like that it yeah. would look cool yeah but no he's just got like normal weapons uh for the most part but is that guy then there's the the rogue who's like <laughs> yeah the assassin. the assassin or whatever who is he's got we'll see him later he's not wearing it yet he has the world's worst armor it, and it, it looks, looks so, so stupid yes. um but he's an asshole and he's got face tattoos like all these people have face tattoos mm. and then um 
Uh, and then the bug guy, which yes, I don't know what his, he, they I call him like something. A lich or a they call him like a vile something. something. I don't remember, but uh, he can like turn into bugs. And in yeah. this scene, he like spits up bugs on the table and stuff. He's yeah, he's some sort of crazy weird bug guy. I just called him bug guy the whole time. Um, <laughs> uh, and then there is one more dude who doesn't really matter. doesn't matter because we'll find out why in a second. But he's like, hey, can I? He knows. I guess he finds out somehow. Or she, they're, they're looking for uh, people to aid them in their quest for something. And yeah. it, but I don't know why he. He decides to join up with them. I think it some the, some information that I, either the prostitute it, gave him or it, something. Like or, the barbarians, I, 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 it might be the 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 Goliath dude was. No, it was that. I think it was the dude he killed. Was what? It was with that process. Like, oh, yeah, just, and then just, so just, she's like, "Hey, he's in." The, okay, yeah, yeah, because he wants to meet. Oh, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it's one of the guys from that group was with the prostitute, so he goes mm-hmm. to join up with them, hoping that he, they know where his dad is, basically, and he can kind of like follow along with them to like figure it out. Um, and they're like, "Okay, if you want to join us, you got to murder somebody <laughs> in cold blood." In cold blood, which he does not do, but we'll get no. to that. Pick someone here. And kill them in cold blood. But so he he's he's like ah, oh, but I'm a good guy, and they're like, well, fucking, we don't care. You got to murder somebody <laughs> in cold blood. Can you imagine like your initiations? Hey, uh, patrons of this bar, this guy needs to kill one of you, and none of them do anything. Yeah, they, nobody draws they a weapon or even him. tries to run. They're just like. He pulls out his sword and looks around at people in the bar like, should I kill you? And they're like, please don't. But they don't leave or anything. And then while he's standing there deciding who to murder, uh, that other guy, Mm -hmm. the the last member of their crew, comes up to kill him, I guess. Something. And he he just gets it, you know, give give him the good uh, sword. Rear stab, you know, stab behind you kind of thing. and impales that guy. And then he walks over, he's like, all right, you got any questions? <laughs> I'm a badass. Everyone okay with one fifth? And I'm like, but you didn't kill somebody in cold blood. You literally killed a guy who was, you was self-defense. Yeah, the guy yeah. was killing you. That is not killing somebody in cold blood or whatever. But they're like, all right, cool. You can join. Uh, you can join up, and we're gonna. They're gonna like. They have a plan to rob something, to steal something, because mm-hmm. they want some money that they're gonna split or whatever. Um, which is, uh, we find out, I think, is this village's like treasury or whatever that we get to here before too long. Uh, then they go out on their adventure, or they start kind of traveling, and this is where we first see the the assassin in his armor, and it's, it's just so, uh, it's it's nothing but spikes and studs, and it's too it's big. Really for him. shitty leather. Yes, yes, it's really shitty leather for somebody who's like six inches taller. And all it, it has like pieces of uh, of a uh, sheet metal yeah. that are like bent up. Yeah, it was spikes, and then his helmet. Lo- it just looks terrible. I think it might be, and I could be wrong. I would have to. I'll see if I can find it and send it to you. I think it might be a a fan made knockoff of a of a of a set from Wor- uh, World of Warcraft. <laughs> I think it literally might be like a cosplay <laughs> set from like based on like a, a rogue oh, set from World of Warcraft. Yeah. It looked vaguely familiar to me, but just like worse <laughs> than what I remember like cuz I played a lot of World of Warcraft back in the day, so I think I recognized it from that, but I could be wrong. Anyway, so they get uh, they get to the city that they're going to, and a dragon and a fr- is... Yeah, dragon's already in the middle of attacking. Fucking like, oh, everything well, up. Sucks to be them. We're yeah. gone. <laughs> and they're like, well, uh, let's just wait, because uh, the dragon grabs some people, mm. and they're like, we'll go... He, he's going to eat those people, and while he does that, we'll have time to get in there and uh, kill him or whatever. And Grayson's like, well, we should attack now and protect the people. The dragon will sleep after gorging itself. Oh, why aren't we attacking now before it eats and regains its strength? People. <laughs> Fucking! A, a I will name. say for a paladin, for for somebody with a, a, like paladin edicts, if you yeah. will, he's really good with his bluff checks <laughs> uh, because he's like, we should we should fight it now before it has a chance to build its strength. Yeah, yeah. He's like, uh, she does not buy it though. She, she I mean, say what good at bluff check? She absolutely sees through it and just backhand magic backhands. Yes. She, so she her, apparently is this a real thing, yes. Kyle? Well, I mean, kind of. It, it's it's mage hand. I, okay. must, I think that's what she's yeah, casting. Yeah. And uh, well, she does several times. Yeah, in the she movie. does several times. And so that's like her go-to spell is <laughs> yeah. mage hand. She shoots her hand off and backhands him with it. And I was like, that is incredible. I love that. 
And then, uh, so then they get to the cave. They, they, they travel into where the, the, or the cave where the dragon lives. And when they get there, Bug Guy pulls his eyeball out and it, <laughs> it just shoots out. Like, <laughs> yeah, and go, and this, so I did watch the 2001 and it's different. But in that one, uh, Bruce Payne's character has some sort of, uh, the, uh, Jeremy Irons puts some sort of like parasite in him or something mm-hmm. that then like shoots out of his ears and it's kind of similar. And I don't know if it's supposed to be the same kind of thing or what's going on there. Do you know well, what like, the eyeball thing is? Is that a thing it, you can do in dungeons? Like <laughs> normally, normally for that kind of stuff, you just want scrying. Yeah, I would assume. And yeah, that's done with just like a basin with like right water. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, I didn't know if the eyeball. It has to be magic. I didn't know if the giant like, eyeball blue thingy came was like a. Thing. My assumption is they wanted something to represent that better than just somebody looking through right. like yeah water. Plus, it's creepier, and he's like a creepy mm-hmm. dude, anyways. Um, but anyway, so he shoots his eyeball in, and then he see, ends up seeing the dragon and gets attacked, and his eyeball gets hurt, but it <laughs> sucks back into his head, and, and he seems it's okay. Like, oh, he just, he, like, it didn't do anything. No, he seems fine. He, like, pulls his hand away, and his eye's fine. It's yeah. Like, oh, okay, well. Uh, well, and that actually is kind of important. We're establishing that this guy's pretty much invincible. Yeah. Uh, which is, will be important later for uh, a scene that's a I think this, is, is, is this guy the lich that uh, they created at the beginning? Oh, you think? Like the oh. dude who originally had his body like consumed. Sacrifice. It could be, yeah. I, if that is the case, the movie does a terrible job of mm-hmm. establishing that that's the case. But it could. That's an interesting idea, at least, uh, that that could be the case. Um, but anyway, so they they he, they're like, all right, we got to go in the dragon. Let's go fight him. And they get in and we fight with the dragon. Uh, assassin gets lit yeah. on fire. <laughs> <laughs> just catches on fire and is immediately armor. takes off his shitty armor. <laughs> yeah, uh, he rips his cloak off. He's on fire, and all kinds of shits going down. Um, <clears throat> and actually, overall, I thought it's this battle yeah, this okay. not terrible. It's really not terrible. And again, that's my note from most of the movie is like it's a lot better than it has any right being. Uh, but they fight this giant dragon. Uh, they she, he uses some uh, ultimately ultimately is able to, f- to defeat it by using some spell that uh, uh, what is her? I keep forgetting her name. I keep wanting to say Akira, but Starts it's not with a, an A, right? It's a, a, a accordia. 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 She gives him. Uh, I also called her Deborah Morgan in my notes all the time because she looks like Morgan or uh, Dexter's sister mm. from okay. Dexter, yeah. like exactly. <laughs> um, uh, but she um, she gives him some sort of spell. I don't know, like some sort of telekinesis. Yeah, she is spell. like trapped under the dragon at one point, right? Or yeah. She- so yeah, the dragon. Cra- uh, like traps her and then he runs over to try to get her and she's like here use this and gives him some spell or something that yeah. he throws at the ceiling and collapses the rocks on the dragon it's not how and that kills works it. like fucking magic in D&D is not a fucking spear bomb you can't just give it to somebody else I, it's something <laughs> and she says say some word and he says some word and it explodes and mm. like blows the ceiling down on this dragon so they kill the dragon uh, but they, they cast can- earthquake in a uh, confined space okay yes and it caused the cave in that's a function of the level 8 spell earthquake Brian, if you knew anything about D and D and magic, you'd know this. If you say, if you keep saying, I, yep. Just every time I don't know something, you should say, <laughs> if you knew anything, it'll be a, an, an eight and a half hour long episode. It'll be great. Um, but anyway, so they they they're able to defeat him. They think initially that Grayson died because uh, he's like uh, in the rubble, but he's he's triumphantly walks up from behind the rubble and it's like <laughs> he says a terrible one liner. I can't remember what he said. Speak when spoken to my ass. Dragon Slayer! Oh my god, I because it was so stupid, it wasn't even like a good whatever. Um, but but he he then finds that some of the people that the dragon captured are still alive. Yeah. And they're like, hey, he's like, we should rescue these people. I love how her initial thought is just because they're evil, right? Yeah. It's just like, hey, whoa, 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 we don't have time for sacrifices or, or slaves. slaves yeah. Okay? <laughs> and, he, and he's like, wait, no, I mean, I want to save them. I never said anything about slaves or human sacrifice. I think he means to liberate them. <laughs> and I love my favorite little detail in this scene. Oh, also, the, we see the rogue lockpick, uh, or the assassin or whatever, lockpick a chest with, like, a telescoping yeah. like, lockpick because it has a booby trap on it that goes off, which I thought... But he opens the chest. Uh, they're like, should we save the people? And they're all like, no, we don't save the people. But then the bu- my favorite thing, uh, uh, Grayson makes another appeal. He's like, look, we can if we take them back to the people, if we take these people back to the village, yeah, they'll, they'll let us they'll, in. They'll and be, treat us like heroes. Like heroes, yeah. And they'll let us into everything. Yeah. And I love when he says this, the, the bug guy <laughs> just walks over to Accordia next to her and goes, Yes. <laughs> he just 
like moans yes in her ear, and it's so <laughs> okay, so weird. She's like, oh, thanks, I guess. Okay. They treat us like heroes. Yes. Um, and then so they're like, all right, they. Uh, then they get to the village. They let them into the village. They're like, oh, you saved our people, blah, blah, blah. Huzzah! We, yeah, we got a fun little scene where the bug guy tells uh, Grayson a cautionary tale about a raccoon and an apple, which is very... That actor's good. Most of the performances are pretty good. Mm -hmm. I thought the bug guy in particular was like pretty good at this like creepy, weird... I think if dude. they would have kept him more shadowy, if yeah. that makes sense, if they would have left him more mystery... Yeah. It would have played a lot better because the guy, like you said, the guy can pull it off. Yeah, I thought he did a pretty good job performance wise. Uh, I had a lot of fun with him. But then they get in the village. Uh, Kratos fucks like 10 women. Like we see him in just a pile <laughs> yes. of an orgy pile or something like that. Meanwhile, we also see the bug guy gets like a magic. Yeah, he gets a ring, ring off of a dead person. Yeah. And he, uh, I think he casts Gias on it or Quest is what it is. And you like give somebody a premonition when it triggers. Yeah. And his Why premonition would he, he's to her, just an asshole. It's so great. Well, it could because he revels in the in pain the pain okay. of others. Like Okay, I guess that makes sense. I guess I couldn't figure it's out so what good, his, I though. couldn't figure out what his deal so, was. So he casts like uh, quest or something like that get on the ring gives it to the wife of the guy who puts died it on, and it's like guess what your your gia says you get to watch your husband die <laughs> yeah get disemboweled it's just, she just sees his intestines being ripped yeah, out and is like great. Ah, and runs inside and the little kid he's like go go keep an eye on your mom I'm like what the fuck is happening <laughs> but so you're good. okay yeah i guess he is just yeah he revels in, in misery or whatever sure fine um meanwhile in the bar uh, Grayson is getting hit on by some random woman, and Accordia is very jealous. Mm. <laughs> Deborah Morgan is very <laughs> jealous about this. Uh, she wants to fuck her brother. And then I think that happened in Dexter eventually, yeah. didn't it? I didn't Something. watch I don't like know. the third season, so, so I don't have any idea. Um, but she gets very jealous. So she literally throws this woman to the ground yes. and then turns to Grace and says, Let's get this over with, and then takes him to the back room. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, let's fuck. Uh, and then they get, she takes him to the back room. Meanwhile, and so while she's getting ready, she's getting changed and getting all sexified. He he grabs, she has like a headdress yeah. thing that she wears, which is like a communication device of some mm -hmm. sort. Um, which I assume is similar to in the new movie. They use rocks as walkie talkies at some point. They like enchant them so they can talk through them. And this seems like a similar kind yeah, of thing. It's like it's, a stone that she yeah, can talk it, through. It's like um, it's a like a telepathy yeah. device. Um, but he puts it on and he sees uh, his father. His father being tortured. Like, yeah, yeah. He's he's. So. The line is so good. It cuts in, and the guy, the torture guy, turns to whoever, like, we're seeing from like a first person perspective mm -hmm. of like whoever's wearing the other end of this communication device. And the torture guy turns to him and goes, The apparatus is ready to extract the liquid pain lord shot through and I was like, this is the dumbest sentence that anybody has ever said. <laughs> the apparatus is ready to extract the liquid pain. <laughs> Oh, good. Um, so he's like, oh, shit, okay. Uh, so he knows he's on the right track, basically, yeah. at this point. Uh, but then she comes out and is like, you may ravish me however you see fit. <laughs> it gives her one of the most savage lines. Just, it's so good. It's so good. Tells her, put your clothes back on. Yeah. You told me I could ravage you in any ways. I choose to ravage your pride. <laughs> I chose to ravage your pride. My desire is to see you humbled. It's a very funny oh line. God. Uh, but then she nags him into fucking her. <laughs> She's like, oh, yeah, okay, no, I get it. No, my, my vow of, 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 of <laughs> celibacy and chastity, no. Yeah. Uh, she she kind of, like, shit talks him into getting her and then gets, gets her to have sex with him. I don't trust you. I think we'll travel to Shathrax's fortress without you. So they have sex, and then we cut to the next day, and they're getting ready to leave. Uh, and meanwhile, oh, also we didn't explain uh, the 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 assassin killed the uh, treasury yes, guy yeah. guard or whatever, and broke into the treasury and stole everything. <laughs> basically, mm. uh, next day they are leaving, but like it's trapped. It's, it's a setup. 
Yes. Yeah, so the next day they're leaving, and then they they think they got it, they're getting away with it, but the the door gets shut, and mm. all the army comes out, and they're like, "Hey, we know you stole all of, all of our shit. Give it back." And she's like, "Accordia is like, fuck you. We'll kill all of you. <laughs> Eat shit and die." We'll finish what the dragon started and bring these walls down around your heads. And then, uh, and then the paladin has the paladin. Yeah, he comes in. He's like, "Wait a second. Wait a second. What if we take half of it, and then you guys just let us leave?" And oh, she was also threatening to kill the mayor guy or whatever. Yeah, she had like she yeah, used her mage. Which, yeah, use her mage hand for an attack. Yes, which is called Big B's crushing hand, which is another high level spell. That's okay. anyway. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> she threatens to like crush his Nerd. larynx or whatever. Get those nerds! Nerd! Nerd! Um, and then, uh, but but the paladin is able to broker peace. They're going to let them leave with half of the money, and they're like, getting ready to leave. And then, as soon as they're about to leave, <laughs> in uh, more evidence that this the bug dude is like a high level like wizard or yes. whatever. Oh, absolutely! He straight up uses power word kill. Is that what it is? Yes. He vaporizes <laughs> this man. It was I was not expecting this, and I died laughing. <laughs> he he yes. explodes into a mist of purple goo. He's just like. <laughs> It, literally, <laughs> like, like in the world of D anD D, the spell is you utter a word, yeah. and the, if the person is at uh, the certain conditions, they roll a fort save, or they are just dead. <laughs> That's what happens because that man gets vaporized. He goes <laughs> and just explodes. Who can I do. There's a great line. Actually, I, no, I don't think there's a save with that one. Anyways, <laughs> no, not for this one, because otherwise, yeah, he no, definitely he, missed he his definitely saving died. throw. Yep. Um, but I, I, there is a line right before that that I love where when the paladin's making his plea for like peace or whatever, he turns to Accordia and he's like, I'd rather have half with you than all without. He killed the dragon. Give them half. I'd rather have half with you than all of it without you. And I'm like, you guys fucked once, you nerd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you don't even like her. You Okay, sure. But a big fight breaks out. They're fighting everybody. Uh, the rogue is again an idiot. He... I love there's just a, a shot where he's like fighting people and he kills like two guys and then he just rips his helmet off for no reason and throws it away. I'm like, but that's that's okay. the point of a helmet. What are you yeah. doing? Um, and he just all of his everything he it's does too oversized. Is, it was stifling yes. in vision. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, uh, it, he looks ridiculous. Everything he does, his his knives look ridiculous. Everything about everything. him, it's, it's like so it's bad. like a cartoon. It looks so silly. Anyways, uh, meanwhile, Grayson he, he fighting some people, but he hears some children in like the sewers, basically yes. hiding. And he gets down there and is like, "Oh, don't worry, I'll help you guys get out." And he's like leading them out of the city, and the bug guy overhears this and just doesn't do anything no. about it. I guess it's just he hears well, it and knows because of who he is. Well, we find out later that yes, he's yes. he wanted all this to go to the plan that it did, which we don't realize at the time. But I was expecting something to come mm. of that, and nothing ever really did. And I was like, oh, okay, he just he we just wanted to know that he knew about it, I guess, or whatever. Uh, meanwhile, Kratos is she's like uh, Accordia's like we gotta find uh, fucking Grace and I gotta save him. And <laughs> Kratos is like, you're going to throw your life away for a human boy? Not very. Legendary. <laughs> You're going to throw your life away for a boy. Not very legendary. <laughs> Just great. <laughs> so good. Legendary. Do not take your disappointment out on me, boy. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, and then so they're, they're able to, as they're leaving, she like blows down the door. And then as she blows down the gate, uh, Grayson walks around. Was this corner. a miniature that they blew up or was this? I don't like, know. It looked pretty it looked good. good yeah. yeah, it looked pretty good. They blow a door open uh, and Grayson's outside already because, again, he led the children out into the woods and then kind of circled around or whatever. Uh, and they're like, oh, yay. She's very happy that her fuck boy is um, alive still. <laughs> and then they, 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 they mosey off to split up the treasure. Uh, our guy takes a bath in the river and then they they. they Stole out the treasure and I was dying, Kyle. She's like handing out the treasure and she tosses a piece of treasure to the Kratos guy, uh, which I don't mm. remember any of these people's names other than the Cordia. Um, but she throws some treasure to this guy and the what he is holding is a hundred and ten percent, Kyle. It is the little jingly dangly bits from a uh, a belly dancer costume. Oh, 
That is what that is. That is 110% what that is. You will not convince Brian me that it's anything. Brian knows personal uh, experience. I, I am aware of what that's, that is. That is 100% what that is. And I'm like dying that that is their treasure in this movie. It's just like that's. I do also like a how she. A for a belly dancer. She's like, uh, this is like 12,000 gold worth of, 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 of gems or and, or whatever. Yeah. Like, do, do you just know that? You yeah, just know exactly how much it's worth? Did the math, man. Did some you do your math. price check? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> price check. Sure. I'll let you make all the D&D <laughs> jokes because I don't know any of them. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, then that night, um, I, I don't understand this. Grayson throws his dragon trophy in the water for some reason. He's like, fuck it. Because the bug guy he made him like a little Oh, necklace. yeah, yeah. He like took the tail off the yeah, dragon. Yeah, it was like, like here, like, you, you did this. Dragon this. slayer. So he throws that into the lake. And then he goes to chat with Kratos. And Kratos tells him this story, this like sad story about how his village was destroyed yeah, and his yeah. family was and murdered. Of course, since... You know, it's it's Goliath barbarian like uh, village mentality yeah. or whatever. They're like, uh, we were uh, we were this happened because your family's weak. So get fucking get out of here. I will avenge my family's shame by killing all those who remember it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so he leaves and then he's like, well, I'm going to now that he has his fortune, he goes, I'm going to go back and I'm going to take my village back and rebuild it or whatever. Uh, and, and Grayson goes, the fuck you are. <laughs> And just poisons them to death. And I, I, Kyle, oh I don't God. understand why. Why does he kill that guy in this moment? He kills the Kratos, who is like the nicest guy yes. of all of these people. Like he's the most goodish seeming. And he just told you like his tragic backstory. Yes. If and any of, of uh, the alignment of all the characters, yes. this guy at least seems chaotic neutral. Yeah, he's like the most okay of all of these people. He's like a warrior guy who's out to make money, but he doesn't seem to like revel in cruelty or anything like that. He's yes. just like a dude. And and Grayson is no, like, fuck, fuck you. you die. <laughs> Poisons him, puts him in a bag of holding, and shoots him in the lake. Which I thought was great. I thought that was a lot of fun. Because oh, they're all like, where the good. fuck did he go? And he's just gone the next morning get, when they wake get, up. Get in there! A seven-foot Goliath disappears with 60,000 in gold, and nobody hears or sees a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I could still. I was so confused at why, they, uh, why, they, why he killed him there. Because it seemed like if anybody you were going to convince to be an ally, it was that guy. Mm -hmm. But apparently not. Uh, the rogue then the next day the rogue assumes that Grayson did something and is like threatening to kill him and then while he's doing that bug guy shows up and just <laughs> well, he like he like switches out his dagger for a scorpion that stings oh, yes. him yeah that's what it is that's right I'm, yeah I'm a little unfamiliar with that spell but okay I'll yeah, go he, with it he apparently turns his dagger into a scorpion and the guy gets stung and just dies begging for <laughs> Grayson to have a cordia like heal him because she apparently has healing powers as well yeah because he did heal like a a cut on Grayson's head with after they fucked, which I don't know if that was there before they fucked. <laughs> I think it was. I think it was. I think too. like, but the, the I don't think the claw marks on his no, chest were there no. before they <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Pretty sure. Wanna, you want to do something about these two? Uh, no. Okay, no, he's gonna leave those there. Okay, cool. cool. Those are your trophy. Great, <laughs> amazing. Anyone foolish enough to pledge their life to a god that doesn't give a damn deserves what they get. The best scene in the movie. They're, yes. they're traveling through night, and they come across this little girl sitting on this a log. This is so creepy. Dude, this is so good. It's so creepy. It also reminds me of, like, Pan's Labyrinth. Yes, bit. or something. It's so creepy. And also a little bit of, like, the, um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, what are they called? In, um... Oh my God! What is the Bio, game? Bio, yes, Bioshock. Yeah, the, the little sisters. Little sisters. That's I, yeah. Isn't it weird? I knew what you were thinking there. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what are they? Yeah, like the little sisters. A little mm. bit like when they're like evil still, or, or like you know, like kind of like possessed or whatever still. Um, but there's this little girl, and you see her from behind. And I was I was writing a note while this happened. Yes. And then she turns and, and sprints like, at the camera, the? and I was like, ah, I, I'm hungry. <laughs> literally like jumped out of my chair. This Kyle. is. <laughs> this is the best CG in the whole movie. It's insane. It feels like it's from an entire, like, it feels like the people who did it, yes. this scene, is different, a completely different production. Completely house. unrelated to everything else because it's, uh, yeah, it, it was so gross and creepy and weird and gnarly. It was amazing. I was like, this is yeah. so cool. <laughs> what the fuck is this? And then the whole scene, is this a monster from D&D &D that you recognize or something? Uh, not really. Like, this one just seems really out of place. But she's, apparently she's hungry and what she feeds on is like, 
your soul by sucking on people's fingers or yeah, something. Yeah, she gets like a taste of people's like what they've done. It's gnarly. She runs up and she's like, my tummy hurts. And then like, they're like, all right, you got to let her feed on you. And bug guy walks up and she just slurps on his finger. And mm, it's so yes, creepy. And, yeah, and he's like, yeah. And it's so, uh, the whole scene <laughs> is so upsetting. And then uh, Grayson does it. And he's like, and you think, oh, the paladin, dude. <laughs> right? Yeah, no, no, he's fine because he killed the barbarian guy. Yeah, yeah. She's like, I can taste evil, your evil deeds or whatever. You've done bad things. <laughs> and he's like, oh, okay, cool, great. <laughs> and, the, and then uh, Worms dude was like, well, I had no doubt yeah. after you killed our al, after you killed uh, whatever. Yeah, he like allies, whispers to him. He's like, I knew you killed blah blah blah. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah. So you just know sure. everything. <laughs> great. Well, I dare say you did it when you murdered Vimey. And then uh, Accordia goes to do it, and while she's doing it, the little the little girl's like, I taste yeah. love! Yeah. Gross! Love! Because <laughs> <laughs> Accordia loves Grayson, but apparently Grayson does not love Accordia. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she he's like... Uh, she's like, you, you love, I taste love or whatever. And it, like, she freaks out and then she calls her father <laughs> to come murder them, yeah. which is a giant red spectral armor. I don't even know what this is. I don't know. Uh, bug dude just gets instantly wrecked. Yeah. He gets impaled. And I was like, well, that was unceremonious and quick. We'll find he's not fucking dead again. No. Establishing that he's pretty much invincible. Um, but he just gets immediately murked. Uh, and then, um, they face big chase scene. This thing's chasing him around. Uh, ultimately, Grayson stabs it through the head and kills it. Um, yeah, and inside its armor, the cover of the book. Yes, for some reason, I, ooh, it seems like okay. an awful coincidence. Or I don't know, but yeah, uh, the armor was in, or the the cover of the book was inside this like red spectral monster thing. Um, and so now they have the cover of the book, so they need to go to the temple. To take it to the temple or whatever, um, mm. so that they can create the book or whatever. But yeah, that's I just I have to reiterate I, that scene. I could talk about for the rest of this episode. It's so good. Yes, it's and it's, so upsetting. It's, it's just it's so also good. insanely out of place. Yeah, it's completely out of place, but it's amazing. You know what it also reminded me of is some of the monsters from like with the Witcher and stuff, like mm. uh, especially in the games, like some of the weird like little baby. Monster, yeah, there, there is like, something like very <clears throat> like European horror about. Yeah, it. yeah, it's. And this, the whoever designed that, it's so, it's so good, creepy. Uh, I was just blown away. I was like, "What is this doing?" And, and here? then you get the shitty CGI dragon from yeah. earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's wild. Uh, um, so then they teleport to some temple, and there's all these people waiting for them, mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's like all these women like on the steps. It's like a, it's a den of iniquity, Kyle. <laughs> They're just like lounging on the steps, looking sexy or whatever. Uh, and then they walk up, and I I thought this was cool. Uh, they talk to Shathrax. This is like his temple, and he's this dude who has his mouth like stapled shut. Yes, <laughs> is this what he's like? Uh, I don't know. I I have Does no he clue. Show up in campaigns well, or like, whatever. I don't know. I really don't know who. I'm, I'm sure it's somebody who's in, yeah. in the Book of Vile Darkness. Yeah, uh, but I'm unfamiliar with this. Yeah, but so he has his mouth is is like st stapled shut, and then he has these two hot ladies on like leashes that like talk for him, but also move when he moves. It's very strange. Uh, they're also wearing like their, their the, like leather pants are like very clearly bought at like a sex <laughs> shop. Like it's yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. just very funny. And they, they all also have the gym. Yeah, uh, whatever. So they're the all stone. like. Like linked, Tele you know, telepathically yeah. linked. Yeah, so they like speak for him because he can't because his mouth is sealed shut or whatever. Mm. Um, and then so they're like, "Welcome to our home. Uh, you can do whatever the f this purge purge rules apply here. <laughs> do whatever you want. <laughs> there are no rules. Yeah, basically." Uh, and so Grayson immediately fucks off and just um, finds his dad, yep. like, in the first yeah, place yeah. he looks. He just, like, stumbles in into a In a completely room. unsecure room. Yeah, yeah, they just walks in and is like, hey, dad, there you are. Hey, uh, you know that thing we need for uh, the book that we now have? Uh, we got a guy up there that we're going to take some blood out of. Uh, let's make sure that that's protected because he might be our only source of this. Yeah. He's at least the only person we captured for it. Yeah. No, no. just leave him there. Who cares? Yeah. Gives a shit. Well, it's all, it's all part of the plan, Kyle. Because it's all... Part of the plan. 
because he's not actually the True. guy they need True. to extract <laughs> the liquid pain from. It's actually Grayson. Uh, this is all a, a clever ruse by Bug Boy, <laughs> whatever the fuck his name is. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so they he's able to get his dad out, but then Accordia comes in and is like, what are you doing? I trusted you, blah, blah, blah. And then he like blasts her with magic that I didn't know he had. What? When, since when can he cast he's spells, got, Kyle? He's got like magic items and shit. What, was, it, uh, was it for the ring, right? Was it? Because he, he got a ring of force. Oh. It's supposed to be a ring of force shield. I'll take that ring of force. A bag of holding, a wicked blade, and and that knight armor. Maybe that is what it but is. Like, but he shoots something at her, yeah. and it like blows her across the room or whatever, and knocks her out. But then she like as they they run out, she wakes up, and as soon as her eyes open, a goddamn fucking foghorn goes up, like a foghorn <laughs> yeah. alarm goes off, and they're like, we have an Ooh. intruder or whatever. Um, anyway, so they, uh, they're trying to escape and they get into this room and barricade the door, him and his dad. And then they, he's like, all right, go out the window. And no, they have been teleported to like the plane of darkness or yeah, whatever. They're, they're like up in the middle of nowhere on this like floating Island in a castle or whatever. Uh, so they cannot get out and his dad's like, kill me. You need to kill me. They're going to try to gr write the book with my fucking liquid pain essence or whatever. Kill me. So they can't do that. And he's like, no, I'm not going to kill you. Let's fight and go down fighting or whatever. And he's like, okay, I guess. And when he chooses to fight in this moment, he gets his paladin, paladin powers. powers. Yeah. <laughs> he gets like his fucking chest just like grow. His heart grows three sizes. And, <laughs> and, 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 and fucking but, uh, he gold. just rips out. He, he gets it, pulls out a symbol and he's like, bam, and just starts blasting. Yeah. His, his, his little amulet thing just like starts glowing and he like melts everybody. But then bug guy shows up mm -hmm. and like sticks out a leech neck. to his neck. Yeah. yeah. And like knocks him out and bug guy is still alive surprise and this is where we find out that he schemed the whole he's talking after the scene they they, they tr capture them both again and then he's talking to accordia and they basically establishes that he he set this all yeah, up yeah like he needed a, he actually needed grayson or he yes. needed a real paladin or whatever. yeah so he needed somebody to i guess go through a trial to prove their worthiness and become a paladin and get their powers then they can use that to extract the stuff they need for this book or whatever mm -hmm. that's the idea um, so then we cut down, and it's the big, like, scene where they're going to extract the liquid pain from him, and he's, <laughs> he's strapped into the fucking uh, the pit of despair machine it, yeah. from, uh, from uh, Princess Bride. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> not to 11! <laughs> or not to whatever. It also thing. reminds me of, like, Frankenstein, like uh, some Frankenstein-esque yeah. contraption. Yeah, they, so they, 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 they turn the wheel, Bug Guy turns the wheel on, and it starts zapping them and, <laughs> and, and, and it extracts, they say, liquid pain or something like the essence of liquid pain. It's like this I, black yeah, stuff that it, becomes the ink. But they, they bring him some ink and he starts pinning his book of yeah, vile darkness. Uh, Scathrax and like, or his like, name is. Cloud, know, clouds, evil storm clouds evil start burning. Yeah, the darkness in. starts spreading. But then he's like, he writes like three letters in his or runes, and is like, I need more. <laughs> it's like you guys didn't think he might need more than like you know a couple drops yeah. of ink to write his but, vile book uh, of darkness. Uh, Ar Ar what was her name? Ar 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 Arcadia is what? Or uh, Accordia. Accordia. Accordia is watching all she, this. Uh, she mage hands him his holy symbol. It's so anticlimactic. This it is. is. She's literally just watches him get tortured for like five seconds, and is like, nah. Fuck Fuck this. And yes, Mage hands the emblem or the amulet to him, which he grabs and just literally fucking uh, it, it instant kills everybody. He Indiana Jones, he fucking yeah. Ark of the Covenants everybody. <laughs> literally, he shoots a laser that like flies into all of their heads and just melts everybody. Uh, and kills everybody. Uh, fucking Scathrax or whatever his name is like vaporizes and disappears it's so easy it's like yeah. it's just like oh, oh okay so uh, that was cool. that was that yeah great uh so him and his dad survive um and then accordia uh is basically like all right i'm gonna leave you could come with me and he's like no i have to my own stuff to do it's like no 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 go with the crazy hot girl go with the crazy hot girl i i assure you you're not gonna find better sex anywhere go with the crazy hot oh girl <laughs> but, uh, uh yeah, she's just like, I guess I'll see you around sequel bait or something like that. Not even yeah. sequel bait. Well, but there, like, no, well, there is sequel bait because she's like, all right, well, I'll see you around. And then she teleports out. And then as she's teleporting out, a swarm of bugs 
like swoops past oh, yeah. the camera. So I guess Bug Guy's alive still. Sure, why not? And uh, and then the credits just roll, and it's like so sudden and anti climax. I was like, wait, that's the end? What the fuck just happened? It comes out of nowhere. It's a weird ass ending. Yeah. Uh, but the credits roll, and then the credits. Uh, I so I think this was filmed in Europe. There's a ton of there's a ton of um, Bulgarian like names mm-hmm. I think and like and uh, Bulgarian studios and special effects studios and stuff that worked on everything, which would make sense. I wonder if they did work. Well, that's not Bulgaria, but when I was talking about like reminding me of like Witcher stuff, like that like Holy? a Witcher creature. Uh, yeah, uh, but because uh, that's like what's I can't remember the. The the Witcher is based on like a specific yeah, area's it's, like it's folklore. In, it's or in Poland, like it's, it's based out of Polish folklore. In the rough area, I guess. Yeah, you're right, Poland. Um, anyway, so so yeah, maybe it's about the, ready to say the author's Polish. You yes, can't get much yes, more. So, yeah, that's right. I've, I've, I just forgot. It's been I've read the first book forever ago, but um, but yeah. I, so but it was I was I. It's I actually thought this movie's okay. Mm-hmm. It's also terrible. <laughs> I, I guess it's good, bad. I don't know. Uh, uh, um, there, it, there's some moments. It's not really good, bad, but I, it's also not bad, it, bad. It's, its biggest benefit is the fact that it's just like 90 minutes. It's 90 minutes, and it's fun, and it's and it's. It runs at like breakneck yeah, it's, speed. It's just everything keeps yeah, happening. Nothing lingers too long. Nothing boring whatsoever, and it's I, I yeah. There's not enough of like the really ridiculous, hilarious stuff, but there's a couple moments, and I, I get I, I like I said. I would go good, bad, but more so in the sense of some of the movies we do where it's like kind of just okay. It's like good meh. Like I don't like yeah. I, <laughs> or like meh good meh. Man. I don't know. <laughs> like it, it's just it's 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 a tough one. But uh, I enjoyed it. Oh, the other thing that cracked me up this is a little thing. As I was watching the credits roll at the very end, there was a uh, a credits for like a dailies company, like like so whoever company like was handling oh, dailies, yeah. and the last person credited. There was, was no way in hell this was done on film. That didn't say anything about intermediate or whatever. You can do dailies with fucking. I get. You can have a, a video village and stuff with like digital. I don't know. Whatever. Point mm. being, stop interrupting me! Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> what the? Just kidding. Um, the <laughs> the last note uh, or the last credit is this. It just says. It says Juan Soto, and I was like, "That's a weird career change." He was a ba- professional baseball yeah, player, yeah. and he was like the dailies manager on this. Film. <laughs> Obviously, it's not him, but I just thought it was very funny when I saw That's that. I was like, Juan Soto, he worked it worked on uh, Dungeons and Dragons three. Oh, I like this MLB image career. of him, like uh, of him developing film and going like, <laughs> like like that. What he does when he takes a yeah, pitch and yeah, he, like gets yeah. really ready for it. Absolutely. Oh, that's going to do it for this episode. As always, you can do us a giant favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GBRBB. Support us there. Get access to bonus stuff, including podcasts where we do like AMA bonus episodes and talk about stuff, which we'll have out uh, in a couple weeks when we film our next yes. episode. Um, again, because of the, the miscommunication and everything, we're moving things around. But the, the patron Q&A will be out uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, including also a mailbag episode not too long, therefore, after we're still almost accumulated all the mail we need. If you want to send us mail, that stuff is in the description. You can just send it to the P.O. Box in the description. Uh, like I said, support us on Patreon. Head over to Tee Public and buy merch. We have merch yep. none of us is wearing. Uh, Doesn't matter. It's fine. The, the pillow. I got the pillow. Got the pillow. There it's you go. so comfortable. Mm. There you go. You get the pillow. Uh, all that kind of good stuff at Tee Public. Uh, I have a podcast called This Film. So we're talking about movies that are based on books. When this episode's out, our most recent episode will have been 2001 A Space Odyssey. Finally getting oh to boy. that one Some after Arthur, years. A little Arthur C. Clarke. Arthur C. Clarke short story uh, inspired, yes. Um, but we're doing that. That episode will be out uh, when the, when this episode is up. So if you want to hear us talk about 2001, check that out. I believe that's it. Until next time, Keith I, I guess you can watch Dungeon and Dragons. You the can. Book of Wild Dark. You, it's actually or, impossible to find. So <laughs> it is. <laughs> you, you, or, unless you or, want a virus. <laughs> or you can just play D and D three point five because it's superior to fifth edition. Uh, suck it, uh, Wizards. Fifth edition is better. Even though you made also made three point five. Fifth edition is better. No, uh, three point five is better. Shit. Shit. <laughs> I want to clip that. Damn it. Kyle saying fifth edition is better and just post that everywhere. Fifth edition is better. L- like make you lose all your nerd cred. <laughs> <laughs> Judge him. Judge him. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Mage hand.